Among all the chaos, 22-year-old Miles Routledge, that's right, 22-year-old Miles Routledge, a British student who made his way to Ukraine on the very last train from Poland, despite government advice against doing it, is going to join us now. Last year, Miles hit the headlines after getting himself stuck in Kabul during the Taliban takeover. Miles has shared constant updates with his online followers, including the moment that he was forced to flee for his life into a shelter as bombs rained down. Extraordinary footage. And another encounter with Ukrainian troops who suspected he may be a spy. Well, I'm privileged to say that Miles Routledge joins me now from Kharkiv in Ukraine. Hi, Miles. Oh, hi, Mark. Good to be here. How are you doing? Well, I'm very well. Probably better than you because you're in a war zone. Yeah, sounds, uh, sounds about right for me anyway. Um, it's not the best situation here, but everyone's uh, holding up quite well. Uh, what have you seen today, Miles? What's the situation like on the ground? Mm. So constantly there's missiles flying. You hear them whizzing over your head. And unlike the Taliban, you don't know where they're going to come. So you have three seconds warning to jump behind a bed or a bunker. Uh, everyone's evacuating. The ghosts of the, um, the streets are absolute ghosts. Um, there's no one in the streets. There's only forces out and about patrolling the area, looking for Russians. Buildings are collapsed everywhere. But everyone has been very kind. Everyone's helping one another out. The Ukrainian people have good spirits and they're doing good work. They're looking after each other, Miles. What is their mood? Really positive. Um, I think they're actually more um, merry than people in Britain at this point. I, I see them sharing food with complete strangers, building community, and I think that's the one thing the West has actually lost. They're doing good stuff, and I think they're incredibly hopeful for a Ukrainian victory, or at the very least, if they're running away to the Polish border for safety, um, they've got high spirits. Miles, I think it's very courageous what you're doing. What has motivated you to enter what is now one of the most dangerous places in the world? Of course, yes. So when the attacks actually happened, I woke up to many phone calls and within the day I booked a plane to Poland to head over. And the main reason I went was I want to do my own little independent journalism better than the actual mainstream media. And that's why I've got so many followers. But also there's some people on the ground that actually need my help. And that's why I'm getting donations from people on social media. Even today, I've helped a family of six uh, children and a wife and a husband get out of Ukraine from giving them donations and directions and through my contacts. So I think I'm doing better work than uh, the average journalist. And I think that's why the mainstream hates me. So I'm reporting the truth down here, unlike the propaganda that you see online that's been exposed recently, like seen on GB News. And I just think, truthfully, I'm built for this stuff. I don't panic. I don't freak out. Um, I think this is my calling. Well, all you can do is say what you see. And that doesn't make you a hateful, hateful figure, Miles. It makes you an important voice in this horrific story. How close have you been to gunfire or explosions since you arrived in Ukraine? So when I went, when I was going up the front lines of Kharkiv, I was intercepted by Ukrainian special forces who took me as a Russian spy. During the bombardments, they let me into their military shelter where they uh, gave me food and they realised I'm not a Russian spy. I'm just um, somewhat of a journalist and a traveller. They liked my stories, they gave me food, but as soon as we sat down for lunch and exchanged stories, we heard the sirens go off. We sprinted to the shelter as quick as we could. Um, we grabbed our guns and helmets and everything, but a building about half a block away from us, roughly about 50, 100 meters was blown up and we had the shrapnel hit the windows and we saw the smoke in the air as we head downstairs. So pretty close. Um, when I got a military escort to my hotel, because they were going the same direction in the morning after sleeping at the shelter, I saw shrapnel, I saw, um, I saw glass covering the streets, I saw buildings on fire being put out and uh, them collapsing in front of me as we try and pass down the road. I saw trails of blood and I saw um, people trying to do good work despite the situation. And what about uh, your uh, plans for the next few days? What are you going to do, Miles? Because obviously I acknowledge your heroism, your courage in reporting these human stories from the front line. But don't you fear for your life and aren't your family worried? Oh, the good thing is, truthfully, if I had a family, I wasn't so strange from because sadly my family has many issues and I'm not in contact with them. But if I had a family of my own or a previous family like parents and anything that 
you know, I actually frequently talk to. Truthfully, I I would have been would have been doing this, but in my current situation, I think, you know, um, with only being a liability to myself, I can put myself at risk and do this good work. As soon as I get a family, maybe I'll stop or maybe I'll choose a different career. But at the moment, I'm fearless of what I do. I don't hesitate. If I see a bombing, I don't go running. I I deal with a situation, and truthfully, I might die here. That's understandable, but I think doing charitable work and handing out thousands to people who wouldn't be able to get it, um, opposed to charities that are corrupt and donate millions to their CEOs back in the UK, I think I'm doing a better job, and I'd rather die here doing that, knowing I'm a person who believes in Christ and Catholicism. And that's no crime in my book. Miles, uh, is there any concern that you might be getting in the way or hampering efforts of Ukrainians to defend themselves? That's something I often think about, and it's something I don't want to do. But when I was hanging out with the Ukrainian Special Forces, they were welcome to have me, and they also wanted me to send out a message. But when I got on the media, uh, they wanted me to say that, thank you for coming, and also thank you for everyone who's planning to come over. And if you come over to Ukraine, if you're British or whatever your background is, they'll treat you like brothers. And I think they were inviting of what I was doing. But at the same time, I know there's a fine line between what I do and becoming a scummy journalist who pushes their way into things, like you see with some big news companies. And I won't cross that line, or at the very least, I'll try not to. Well, all of the footage that we've been playing during the interview have come from you, from your smartphone and camera, including footage from uh, Afghanistan as well. Uh, you're a remarkably brave young man. I, I know that I speak on behalf of my viewers to say, please take take great care. We don't want you to come to harm. You're a remarkable young man and you definitely got cojones. So look, I wish you well. Stay safe and do keep telling the stories of those Ukrainians as they defend themselves, defend themselves against Russia. And I hope you'll join us on, on the show again soon. I hope so too. I'll be doing some good work and um, I'm sure I'll come back in one piece to see you again, guys. Definitely. Come and see us in the studio. You'll get a warm shake of the hand from me. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much to Miles Routledge there, reporting live from a war zone in the heart of Ukraine.